I bumped into a couple of fellas at the gym today and we kind of got chatting away and I don't know, five, maybe 10 minutes went by and I was uh, doing cool. Um, and five, 10 minutes went by without me doing another set, which is obviously a too long of a break. But as we were talking, one of the fellas said, hey, we don't want to hold you up, man. We'll, you know, we'll bounce on out of here. And I said to them, uh, it's okay, man. Like I'm, I'm in the middle of doing core, boring as shit. It's okay. You guys are saving me. And we kind of giggled about it. And, you know, um, you know, a few minutes later, they kind of went on their way. And I went back to my, uh, <laughs> went back to doing the core, the weighted sit-ups. And then I kind of caught myself. And I was like, really now? You're going to disrespect core? It's just like, it's a flippant thing, right? Not, no weight to those words, but it's interesting, right? Because I wouldn't have said the same thing if the boys walked up uh, while I was doing squats or deadlifts or bench press or whatever have you. I would have never said that. Oh, it's just boring squats, man. You know, it's okay. I don't mind waiting 10 minutes. It's, it's just an interesting, you know, thought how most people that you talk to in the gym they always put the core kind of like at the end of the, the, the session. Yeah, oh, you put in a couple of sets at the, at the end. You know, also calves. Ah, oh, you do calves at the end, that kind of thing. So you put core with calves. You know, we can debate about the importance of calves, but core? <laughs> Why do we find it boring? Why is it not sexy? Why do we not realize that training core is probably up there with the most useful stuff you can do in the gym. But no, we get excited about quads, hamstrings, chest, lats. Those are the, 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 the needle movers. That's sexy. What's not sexy is doing abs. How boring is that? <laughs> and it got me thinking. Straight away in my mind, I think about some of the strongest people in the world that I've heard about, read about, seen. And one of the fellas that pops up in my mind is Konstantin Konstantinovas. I think I said that name correctly. He was that big freaking guy who used to deadlift huge amount of weights. I'm going to lie if I say like eight, 900 pounds. I'm going to lie. I don't know how much it was, but it was a mixed grip, conventional, good old lean over, grab that by and yank it off the ground. Like real human strength. No like leverages or anything like that going on. It's just a brute, massive mountain of a man moving huge amounts of weight. And one of the things that I remember him about was they used to do this stuff beltless. And he would like take his top off and he would be like, look at this. This is my belt. And he's pointing to his six pack. And this guy's like, I don't know how, how big he was, man, but he was like, huge like 170 kilo man like something like that i'm probably getting way way off but he was like a huge man i remember him being a massive dude maybe no he wasn't that big not like thor size but he was a big dude you know these bulging muscles chest biceps all that stuff and he always used to talk about i mean it was translated from russian about core training he would do the kneeling cable crunches he would do all these like leg lifts and whatever. This is a big dude. He ain't doing this for a six pack so he looks good or whatever. Nah, he was doing this for strength. Think about that. This guy was doing heavy flexion exercises, hip flexion exercises, whether it's leg raises or torso raises, whatever you want to call sit-ups. He was doing them with the mindset of having a strong core because he realized that a strong core is what gives you a strong lower back so anytime you feel like your your lower back is a little bit iffy think about your abs think about your core think about that front belly area train your belly and here i am disrespecting core and why why do i flippantly this disrespect that it's like you know all jokes have a little bit of truth to them right you've heard about that saying do i not realize the importance of core do i not realize how important it is to have a strong freaking core. And a few minutes after that, <laughs> funnily enough, I'm sitting there in between my sets after bumping into the fellas. And I look to my right and there's this dude. I don't know, man. He's maybe like 60 kilo guy, you know, something like that. Not a big guy at all. And he's doing the flag. I don't know whether you guys know what a flag is, but it's when you, when you grab with two hands 
a vertical bar, whatever, squat rack or whatever, and then you flick your legs up and you are horizontal to that bar. So your body is perpendicular to this vertical implement bar, right? And he's holding that. And he started doing reps. He was like raising his legs up and down. Now, obviously, that is a, a very elite level of core strength. What is that? Like, you know, think about doing the flag. If you don't know what the flag is, just type that into Google and you will see. It's a, I think it's a core freaking thing, but there's a lot more going on. It's shoulders, it's freaking everything. That's, but it's a very, very impressive show of core strength. I think it comes from the gymnastic world and, you know, the calisthenics world where these dudes are like, you know, flicking their legs out back and forward. Now, I'm not saying that that is the pinnacle of strength, but, you know, I don't know. Uh, a lot of these guys in the calisthenics world don't have a lot of weight in their legs. So I feel like it's a little bit easier for them to throw their lower body around like that. But for me, I mean, my legs are very heavy. It's kind of the heaviest part of me. So it would take huge amounts of strength to get my legs up like that. But regardless, that's not, not to, you know, throw shade on, on those boys. Like those boys are very, very strong for their, you know, for their size. Very, very strong. But he just, he, it's kind of like a moment that I, I spoke to those boys. I shat on the core training and then I looked at that guy. I'm like, wow, okay, that is impressive. Then I think about KK and I think about all these, you know, bits of, of memories that I remember from all the strong guys talking about how important core is. Core is so freaking important. In fact, I would say, it's probably the most important part of you, I think. The reason why somebody is strong, of course, you need the primary movers. But do you know how much power we all leak through our core? It's huge. It's huge because power doesn't leak through a femur. Power leaks through joints. And where do we find the most amount of joints? In our spine. Every freaking couple of centimeters, there's a, there's a joint. And all these joints are leaking power. And the only thing that's going to prevent that power from leaking is a belt or core. So that, that belt of tissue that we have around our gut is what actually prevents the leaking. And so, yes, you can get a bigger engine in the form of bigger muscles, the primary stuff, the quads, the hamstrings, the glutes, lats, chest, all that stuff. You can get stronger. But if you're feeling like you're not progressing, it might be the core. And the core is one of those things that is probably most misunderstood and most disrespected as I have shown myself today. Flippantly saying, oh, boring core. Dude, it can't be boring, man. It is some of the most important shit that you do in the gym. And some of the most important peop uh, shit that people don't do in the gym. It's almost like when you're talking about cars and some guy starts talking about tires and a diff. And a transmission. It's like, come on, man. The, the average guy's like, tell me about the engine, the kilowatts, man. Nah, if you know about anything about racing, it's all about all the other stuff. How do you put the power down? The way you put the power down is by doing core training. And that's how it is. Appreciate you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.